Hello and welcome to another exciting permanent ankle shackle vlog. As you can see written on the left sole of my foot, this is day 34 of permanent ankle shackles. These shackles have been locked around my ankles permanently for 34 straight days. They're riveted with steel rivets. If you haven't watched that video, watch my installing permanent ankle shackles video. Um, I cannot remove them. The tools required to take them off have been removed from the property, so I can't remove them no matter what. Um, I did say that I was going to post a video of me walking in slow motion with the chains. Um, that GoPro didn't come in time. I just wanted to make this video and get out. Plus, there's so much more information that I have to give out on this that I didn't really want to do that and the walking. So that's why you're not seeing me walking in shackles today. Just a quick update. Um, as you can see, the stars along the soles of my feet um, are still present. And also, the uh, reason for them was because I was able to wear the shackles around bare ankles for over 24 hours. Um, that is a continuation to today. Um, I've been wearing them around bare ankles. I haven't touched pads in um, over two and a half days now. So, so far going straight bare ankles with these heavy steel shackles has worked out fine so far. Um, of course, I've had problems in the past. I was sleeping with bare ankles before and it started giving me trouble. So. Um, hopefully I can continue through the rest of my shackling period uh, with bare ankles without any trouble. Um, I will be posting another video from last night. Um, you'll see that the soles of my feet say uh, day 33 in that video, um, but that's going to be a, um, a time lapse from that night uh, sleeping with bare ankles. Um, so watch for that. On the subject of my contract, I signed a contract for 90 days. I was I was sick of doing the whole, you know, two weeks at a time or one month at a time. So I decided I'm not going to take these off for 90 days. Um, and then talking to my third party, we realized that that contract really has no teeth. All it says is that he can't give me the tools to unshackle myself, but it's not doesn't stop me from uh, ordering a power drill and some drill bits off of Amazon and being unshackled tomorrow. And maybe I bragged a little bit about how I've gotten so used to wearing them. And in fact, in some cases, I actually like wearing them now. Um, in certain cases where I, I'm just sitting, I'm not moving my feet, and I can just feel the, the pressure of the shackles and the weight of them around my ankles. I've, I've gotten so used to it now that I'm actually, I actually, they kind of give me a feeling of comfort. I don't know. It's kind of, it's strange. It's definitely weird. So we rewrote the contract um, and now the new contract is extremely aggressive and it also incorporates the, uh, the uh, solitary confinement project that I'm going to be doing after I build the prison cell. So it's a very long, complicated contract which uh, now guarantees that I will be shackled for 100 days. Um, my official release date will be August 18th and that will mark the 100 days of permanent ankle shackles. And um, there's stipulations within the contract as well, which allow me to uh, be extended beyond that. And they're very strict. So if I miss any of the requirements um, between now and the 100 day mark, um, basically I'll remain shackled. Um, and the, 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 the lowest amount of extension is 30 days. So if I mess up even one of these requirements, um, I will be shackled for 130 days, even if I mess up one of them. So um, also, it's it's a contract that will handle my my indefinite imprisonment in the solitary confinement cell. While that one is a different animal altogether, um, I will be imprisoned in that solitary confinement cell for an indefinite period of time. There will be no set release date. And on the subject of my solitary confinement um, project, I was originally going to build the cell and put myself in it to, to experience that. However, um, in the process of doing this vlog, someone's contacted me and there's there actually have been a long-term prisoner in a facility for contracted imprisonment. Um, it's completely underground and secret. You have to be like invited and I've been officially invited. Um, to uh, join that project or jo join that prison. 
And apparently the reason he contacted me is because a lot of the ideas that I have for my future prison are actually being implemented at this other prison that already exists. So um, again, this is a this is a contract prison. There's no like criminals in there. These are people who sign up to be imprisoned uh, for a short period or long periods of time to experience what it's like to be imprisoned. It's sort of like I guess you would call a I don't know a a prison theme park, <laughs> but it's much more serious. And the reason for this indefinite imprisonment is that um, they basically go on a three uh, contract or three party contract system. So I have to sign a contract with the prison to allow my imprisonment and to, you know to to agree to all the rules and you know requirements and and all the punishments and all that stuff that comes with being imprisoned and then I have to sign a contract with a third party and that third party I actually have to sign a, a power of attorney to the third party so the third party basically becomes the controller of the imprisonment um, they will pay the the fees for imprisonment and they will set the time frame and also they have some leverage over how you spend your time in the prison as well um, so you're basically the way this third party contract works is that you're giving your freedom to somebody that you trust and then they are taking that freedom and uh, contracting the prison to to uh, put you to keep you imprisoned so this three-party contract makes it very hard to break out of. And of course, that's by design. I mean, because the pr people that go to be imprisoned there, they want to know that they're really being imprisoned. It's not just they check in to a hotel and they get locked in their bedroom until they decide they want to leave. Um, this is a real imprisonment. Um, as soon as you sign that contract, you are legally imprisoned there. Um, you cannot escape, you cannot talk your way out of it. There's no way out unless your third party stops paying the bill or uh, you know, or sets a release date. And that's the other thing too, is as long as it's paid up, like say for instance, I, that, that my third party pays for three months, I have to stay three months. Even if the third party goes to them and says, oh, we'll let him out you know, in two months instead. Um, the way the contract uh, is set up that if you, whatever has been paid up front, you have to serve that time. And just like the future prison in my movie, um, there there are solitary confinement cells. Well, they're, they're prison cells with just one occupant, which is what I'll be, one occupant in a prison cell. And, uh, but they have, uh, there's a shower in there. Uh, built into the wall there's you know the toilet all and sink combo thing all that is is all self-contained so that i am never let out of that cell like i go in the door closes and it doesn't open until i'm released um so that's kind of the design that they have and it cuts down on the cost of guards you know and the problematic situation where prisoners are you know committing violence against each other or guards or guards on uh, it just makes it a lot simpler if you just put someone in a box and leave them in there. <laughs> so, um, but th th there's a lot of technology behind it too. There's um, a multimedia system. There's a, a Wi-Fi. Um, there's an internal network where prisoners can communicate through video and chat and that sort of thing. So it's not the kind of isolation that um, you would get in like a real prison where they just throw you in there and and you know you, you see a guard every once in a while when they bring you food and they flip you off. Um, so there's, there is, um, the, the mental component that, that keeps your, your mind active, um, while being solitarily confined uh, away from other people. So this is kind of like exactly what I'm writing in my script. So it's a perfect example. Um, I can go in there. Um, I don't know when I'll be out. The third party will choose that, uh, term, uh, you know, the time that I'll be in there and I won't ever know until the, the point of this is that I, I won't know until the day they come to my cell and say, you're, you're out of here. So, and I, I'm going to be wearing these shackles and these, uh, this tether chain in a permanent fashion, just like I am now, um, during my entire stay there. So this is all kind of blown up way beyond what I expected it would be. So, um, not just for the movie now, and which is kind of 
it's kind of under the table <laughs> at this point that the, the movie's kind of being shelved basically um i'm actually going to be working a, a deal with the prison to make sort of a documentary style show about prisoners in this facility um of course there's going to be extremely strict rules i mean i can't give out names there's i mean if if a prisoner wants their face blurred that's going to be i mean it's all going to be super secret because this prison is like an invite only type situation and everybody in there is has like a strict contract for for privacy and non-disclosure so um it's there's going to be i'm going to be walking on eggshells Luckily, I'll, I'll be barefoot, so maybe I can make it over without crushing some of them. But um, so that's kind of my future goal now. I mean, this is down the line, of course, after I'm shackled. And there'll be a period of time before I actually get accepted in there because there is a waiting list. So I have to wait for someone to be released before I'll be able to get in there. And there's, you know, they're going to bump me up for this reason. Uh, not only for because of the prisoner who's referring me uh, has a lot of clout, but um, also because I want to do this this documentary. So they're kind of fast tracking me in. Let's put it that way. So um, I'll be shooting uh, my vlog from that prison cell. So after you see 100 days printed on the left sole of my foot, um, <laughs> this is probably as long as, long as I don't break any of the rules, um, probably not too far after that, you'll be seeing me in a prison cell. Oh yeah, and back to the contract requirements. Um, as part of the new contract, the third party is requiring me to change out the um, rivets in my shackles with uh, RFID tagged rivets. Um, this will ensure that um, I can't drill out the rivets, you know, secretly. Um, get freedom from the shackles and then put replacement rivets in. Uh, even if I got other RFID rivets, they would have different IDs, uh, different codes. So this ensures that I stay shackled permanently throughout that contract. Um, and that's going to be a video uh, so I can show that, you know, I'm removing the old ones that are in right now and putting in the new ones right after. The shackles aren't coming off. They're going to stay right where they are. So watch for that video. Um, I'll be posting that. Um, I'll just be taking the rivets out and putting the new ones in. The shackles will be staying around my ankles the whole time, so there's no break in the goal there. Um, so anyway, I'm going to cut this one. We're already up to 12 minutes and something. So uh, be sure to like, subscribe, um, all that fun stuff, comment. Uh, let me know what you think, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video for day 35.